Welcome to the never-ending story, the Step Feed Mead series, part five. All right, so <laughs> this has been sitting for a while. Let's see. It. We started this way back on November 21st of 2019. Today is April 14th, 2020. So that's like uh, five months, a little over five months. Anyway, along the way, we added some other honeys to it, that kind of thing. We think it got stuck, and I want to talk about that a little bit. The last time we added anything was March 15th, okay? So it's been about a month. But I want to talk about something that we found out since that point. We used Lalvin EC1118 yeast in this, and we've noticed a few other brews that we used EC1118 yeast in that didn't go where they thought we thought they should go, to like 18% or so. And we've had many commenters in our channel and in our VIP group who have said the same thing. Um, it is possible, and we do have a member of our group checking it out, he's been in contact with a, a distributor or um, an agent from Lalvin, that there might have been a bad batch, not bad, but a weaker batch of 1118 out there, and we might have got some of that. Because I personally have not seen 1118 do what it's supposed to do. It, it just has not crunched through things. We've had several meads that it should have done it and didn't, like Black Sack Mead, Bourbon Boche. These things we added EC1118 to and didn't do anything to them. So that makes me curious because he I've heard from many, many, many people that I only use 1118 and I throw five, somebody said five pounds of honey and it chewed right through it. I wouldn't even attempt that right now. So I, I don't have actual fact. We only have anecdotal evidence by other people and ourselves saying that there might be that and no I am in no way trying to deflect blame if we did get a stuck mead because that's just not how we roll. And as far as Lauva and the company goes we love them. Almost all our yeasts are Lauva and yeast. We're doing um, wonderful things with their... 71 Beast. 71 Beast. Love 71 Beast. <laughs> and it's 71 B but we've We've I misspoke and said 71, 71 Beast one time. And, and it stuck. seems very apropos. So. Yeah, that stuff is awesome. Okay, in the last video on this, we didn't add any more honey or anything like that. It was at a 1064 when we looked at it, and then it went to 1060 by 315, so it only went down like four points. We added yeast hulls to this. Last ditch effort, wanted to try it out. I know you should actually add those in the beginning of a fermentation rather than at the end, but hey, you know what? Try a little bit. To me, if it worked, great. If not, it doesn't really matter. I would drink it the way it was. So what we're going to do today is take a quick reading and we're going to rack this off. And I actually have plans for the lease. So as always, turkey baster, graduated cylinder, hydrometer. <laughs> when you buy a hydrometer, don't buy one, buy three. One to use, one to keep as a spare, and one to lose, because you'll never figure out where you put the other one. Nothing. 1060. So the yeast hulls didn't do anything. That is not to say that yeast hulls can't do anything. Just in this exact instance, they didn't actually help. I'm just going to get a small glass. We're going to take a taste of this. Okay, so I poured a little bit of that sample off into the glass. Right off the bat, it's cloudy. Okay, this stuff has not cleared. It probably needs more time to age. That doesn't necessarily affect the flavor, but it does affect the way it looks, okay? Some people will be turned off by that. Not me. On the smell. Wow, impressive. On a scale of one to 10, this is an eight on the smell. It just slight, slight citrus from the orange peel that got put in there, the zest, but the honey smell just comes right through. Nice and sweet smelling. I'm quite sure this is a dessert style mead because it's a 1060 and I can hear some people out there already cringing that it's going to be cloyingly sweet and everything. I'm not sure that it will be because last time it was actually quite pleasant. We'll find out in a moment though. I would not say that is overly sweet. It makes me happy. It's really good. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm not feeling 100%, first thing in the morning, I will boil a cup of water and put lemon juice and honey in that water, and that's it. No tea, no nothing, just hot water with honey and lemon. And that reminds me of that. Very similar. I'm getting a little bit of the ethanol um, because best I can figure, this is 
that much ABV? I don't really know because I'll have to figure it out later, but you're going to see it down here. Um, but I do taste a little bit of the ethanol. I do get that slight, almost a, a bitter finish that mead tends to give me. Um, not a good or bad thing, just something that I detect in meads. Definitely got the honey flavor though. Rich, sweet. It's very viscous in the mouth. It, this is great. I, I, I like this. I would totally drink this. I'm going to bottle it and we're going to drink this. Um, we will do a tasting on this in probably six months though. Because I think this needs time to clear, and I think it's just going to get that much better over time. Yeah. For now, let's rack it off these, these leaves. So as always, you want to elevate the from vessel and lower the to vessel. What we want to do is put this about eh, maybe halfway down, and we're going to put this tubing in here. By the way, everything was sanitized in... Even my hands, okay? So I see people freaking out already that I'm touching stuff with my hands. Yeah, you got to. Otherwise, what are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to put this tubing all the way in and just give this a few quick pumps to get it going. The idea here, this is a first rack, okay? We want to leave the lease as uninterrupted as possible. Like I said earlier, we have plans for this lease. It's going into another brew. That's a different video coming out soon though. So what we're actually just doing is getting all of this usable brew off the lease into this for conditioning or some people call it secondary fermentation. It's not really a secondary fermentation because this isn't going to ferment anymore. It's done fermenting. Now it's going to mellow. It's going to age. It's going to clear. A lot of those particulates are going to fall out of solution and it should go crystal clear in just you know, probably a couple of months. Okay, so we racked it, and as you can see, it's up to just about into the neck here. Good for lack of oxidization. And by the way, oxidization is a word. I looked it up. Someone said that we made it up. No, we actually didn't. It's a real word. So in attempts to try to get slightly more of the liquid, we inadvertently sloshed it, which means we've mixed, we mixed it up. the, the least you know cake into the beverage. <laughs> But because we have plans for this, we're okay with that because it's not going to get wasted. Just doesn't matter. Okay. But what we do want to do is put an airlock on this with a bung. Okay, so airlock, bung, putting it back in. These little tiny bottles are Carlo Rossi bottles. This is a three liter versus a gallon. Now, the difference is this is a U.S. gallon, which is 3.785 liters. This is three liters. So... Three quarters of a liter. We don't usually make a full, full, full gallon because you want to leave a little bit of space for the bubbling up. Uh, yeah. So, but that is not being wasted. Spoilers. Anyway, this right now is going to go under my desk, where it's going to sit for about six months. As is, no touchy, no nothing. Okay. I'm not going to shake this. I'm not going to do anything with it. I do not want to disturb it. I want to just let it fall out. Let it all clear. And in six months, we're going to bottle this, give you another taste. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.